Guys and gals, hello, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon, I come to you with a very special new video of Dawn Chorus. I put off my episode of Far Beyond the World because I was so excited to head back to this. Um, Miko's Path got an update, and I'm just gonna jump right into it. Yes, Miko is back. Let's just jump right in, everyone. Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes, and let's go. Alarm chain, you're up. Let's do it. <clears throat> Thank you for not ignoring me. Oh, I would never do that. As soon as I say these words, I feel a cold shock of guilt. Isn't that just what I was doing for the last three years? I try to smile, but instead my face contorts into a grimace. Oh, the music has ended. Yeah, quite a moment ago. It was only a single. Ah, right. It seems somewhat small for a vinyl. Can we sit in silence for a while? I think I need a moment. Sure, we have all the time we want. Till dinner starts, that is. I pull a, I pull in Miko closer to me and let him lean on my shoulder. Miko lets out a soft, content rumble in return, closing his eyes and folding his paws on his lap. Cute little wolf. Quite funny that it was Torolf that agitated him so much. A guy I met just yesterday. I relax quickly, too. Having Miko next to me really calms me down easily. The music is playing, and the only crackle of the fire and the only the crackle of the firewood punctuates the meaningful silence between us. There's nothing more we need. Oh god, I love that rune. I love that rune animation. It's so good. This game has just become has just turned into an absolute fucking joy. I love it. I open the door to the cafeteria and let Miko in first. Thank you. Do you see any of our friends? I look around through the tables, searching for familiar faces. Being a lot taller than Miko, it's easier for me to scout the whole the whole room. Bjorn and Travis sitting at our usual table. Looks like the food was already served. Uh, plates full of... I'm not going to even pronounce that. Call it Heliot? Ugh. Potato puree, salads, and sauces welcome us when we get there. Oh, guys, hello. Hey. We sit down in front of them. I'm pretty hungry. I'm plenty hungry already. My stomach loudly demanding some food. So grab a spoon and put a few cabbage rolls on my plate. Oh, I haven't had these since I moved out. How many do you want, Miko? Three. Thank you. I put three cabbage rolls on Miko's plate, along with some puree. What do you got? What do you call these in Norwegian, by the way? <sighs> Other languages. <clears throat> Coward letter, I think. Yeah, I saw it written on the menu somewhere a few times. Is it traditional? I think it's popular across all of Scandinavia. I remember them from Poland, even. Only a bit different, and I always served with tomato sauce. Korea has something similar, but fresh, not cooked. They always serve a spicy dipping sauce with it. It boosts the flavor so much. Oh, have you been there? No, but I've been to Korea to a Korean restaurant. My mom used to serve these with bread instead of puree. I quite liked it. Bread? Really? Yeah, mostly baguettes and French bread. I like these the most. So you're a masochist. A, a masochist? Why? Because you like pain. Oh, the heavens above, Bjorn. Pain? That's French for bread. <laughs> ah! How did this happen? Why do they call bread pain? It's from a Latin or it's from Latin or something, I guess. It's not far from Spanish it's not far from Spanish pan. There's something crawling on my leg. No, there's not. Okay. I lean into Miko, lowering my voice. Feeling better now? Everything okay? Yeah, again, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I would never guess that something like this could be the thing that'd make him snap. He was always controlling himself even more than necessary. It's fine. I I'm happy we got to talk it through. Yeah. Languages are... Languages are crazy. It blows my mind how they can influence our way of seeing the world. Like the extreme examples of South American native languages that lack future clauses or conditional forms. But I'm sure even the subtler differences between modern languages like gendered nouns or lack thereof have some effect on the way we see things. I'll be going now. Thanks for the meal. Carvin, you want to go with me? Oh, sure. I'm done with my food already, so I stand up and turn towards the rest. Thanks for the meal. See you later. Hey, Carvin, have fun. Enjoyed the dinner? A slight nod from Miko. We walked for a bit of silence in silence, so long that I already got worried. Did you have something in mind when you asked me to go with you? One second, guys. Okay. Well, yeah. Do you want to see the sunset with me? There's a hill nearby. I'm sure we would have a good view from there. 
I nod. It would be nice indeed. I plan to go see the sunset anyway. It's my favorite time of the day for photos. A nice idea. I'll grab my camera, okay? Sure, the instant one. I was thinking of taking my mirrorless. Then I could always tweak the results later. Makes sense. I'll wait for you at the entrance, okay? Mm-hmm. See you in a moment. Why was he so timid about it? Weird. He could have asked me in the cafeteria while we were with the others. The only reason I see for asking me here is that he didn't want anyone to follow us. Which is nice, I guess. We'll have plenty of time to sit with our friends. I haven't had an occasion to spend time with Miko for a long while. Something within me flutters gently. Somewhere at the back of my head, there's still a concern that things between us could end the same way as before. But I know that's not, it's not a rational fear. We're both older and wiser. I shake off the thoughts and continue to my room. Ah, that's so nice. Jamming Miko, having fun. Ooh. The hill is steeper than I imagined, and the, f and the fresh, knee-deep snow isn't helping either. But the cold wind and clean air is refreshing and invigorating. Climbing upwards, I feel a sense of purpose. I glance back. Miko is standing a few good meters behind me, his paw on his knees, panting. Looks like his stamina is even worse than mine. You need some rest? I I'll be fine. Uh, we're around halfway there. Uh, do you want me to carry you? I I'll get there. Uh, not everyone has legs as long as you, you know. Come on, then. Come on. Come on, then, or we'll miss the sunset. I it wasn't a joke, though. Oh, God, that's gorgeous. Panting, I see on I see onto the top. I step onto the top. Focused on climbing, I didn't look around much for most of the walk. Now at the top, the beauty of the land around us hits me like a bright flash to my eyes. Maybe it's because of the exertion, but the view literally takes my breath away. The sunset painted the sky red and blue in contrasting folds, like an upside-down coral reef. Miko catches up to me and plops down onto the snow beside me. I can't believe this was my idea! Our guest house is just a small dot and sea of snow in the distance. We've walked quite far, yeah. I only hope it was worth it. Absolutely. Miko grabs my paw and I lift him from the ground. Oh! Yeah, we were lucky, This and this spot is stunning. You haven't made it up here before? No, not to the top. We're closer to the town now than we were in the guest house, and the individual buildings and streets are, are visible from here, even without a telephoto lens. It's beautiful up here. I sit down in the snow and take my camera out of the bag. Miko walks away around and around the hill, marveling at the landscape. Meanwhile, I take a few photos of the sunset in the town, plus one with my photo, plus one with my phone to put on my chirper. Finally, he comes back and sits down on the slope some distance from me. The sun hides behind the horizon leisurely, ending the day. Do you remember the little princess? I don't think so. I read it in primary school, but I can't recall what it was about. Why? Is Miko a little princess? Do you think you're a good person? I don't know. What does it mean to be a good person, even? Are you? No. How can you know? The way I see it, you're a good person if the good you put in the world outweighs the bad. And the way I see it now, I have barely done anything good yet. Isn't it enough to simply be nice to others on a day-to-day -day basis? Miko leans back, looking at the cloudy sky. Maybe. Depends on the definition. Everything depends on the definition, doesn't it? Yeah. Why the question? Just something I've been pondering. Uh, not about you, but in the context of myself. I feel like most people are not that concerned with being a good person, but rather with having a good life. Aren't the two interconnected? Maybe. Stoicism argues that it's the case, but look around. It's hard to believe so. I would like to think that the world somehow punishes the bad deeds and rewards the good, but that's just not the case. Any anecdotal proof is just an example of a false positive. I get what you mean, yeah, the world doesn't seem just. But it is what it is. We can try to change it for the better, but it's pointless to fight against it. Maybe that's the point. If the world were just there, if the world were just, there wouldn't be much of a chance. There wouldn't be much for us to change for the better. Hmm. I didn't spend much time thinking about it, but I feel like being a good person is trying your best to be the best person you can be. This internal change, this internal change for the better. I feel like your intentions should be what matters. It's very easy to start lying to yourself about your intentions and forget about trying. I think the good and the harm we do to the world around us is important. Is the world better with you on it? Or does your existence do more harm than good? Does mine? I'm trying to be good. Maybe I'm not the best possible version of myself. But I don't feel like a bad person. My head is spinning. What will my legacy be? A one of resentment and confusion? 
You know, I spent a lot of time thinking about that after we separated. I thought that maybe you stopped writing because I was a bad friend, or just a bad person in general. Of course not, Miko. Why would you think that? Just a feeling. The feelings don't have to be rational. Though, I sometimes feel like I've been using you. I spent time at your place, ate the food your father was cooking. Miko, I spent time with you because I enjoyed it and wanted to have you near me. If that meant you'd be a guest at my house, then I was even happier. I didn't have anything I could give you in return. Friendships don't work like that. I wasn't your friend to get some perks from it. I was your friend because I liked you. You didn't have to give me anything besides your company. Miko doesn't reply, gazing at the passing clouds, fading to, bin fading to midnight blue. I'll never understand a hundredth of this world, nor of him. But I don't need to. At this moment, everything is beautiful and pure. Do you run down? Do you want to run down the hill? Yeah, that sounds fun. First one at the first one at the bottom gets the other's cake at supper. Hey, I want my cake. No deal. Sorry. How about a kiss? Damn it. Miko's phone ring. Miko's phone pings a notification, and mine buzzes in my pocket a moment later. Huh? Some warning? I take out my phone, but instead of a warning, I see a message from Lake. Hey, we're in the common room. Come join us. Oh, that could be fun. You got the message too? Yeah. What do you think? I'd rather go back to my room for now. I've got to warm up and rest for a while, but you go ahead. Hmm, I could make some other plans too. There's something I feel like I need to do, and this sounds like a good moment. I can walk you to your, to your room then. We arrive at Miko's door and the wolf stops in front of it. Even though we spent the last hour or more together, talking, talking, now there's a certain awkwardness between us. So, see you later. Yeah, at supper? Sounds good. The door closes and I exhale with relief. I was afraid he'd ask me about my plans, and I didn't want to lie to him. Now I have someone else to talk to. I only hope he's in his room. Knocking on the door, I go over everything that bothers me, trying to form my chaotic thoughts into words. I don't know if talking would help me, but it's better to try. Besides, I feel like I would explode if I kept silent. Garvin! Yeah, uh, do you have a moment? <laughs> Maybe. Bjorn leads on the doorframe, hesitant. Oh, am I interrupting something? Getting that dick suck? No, mm -mm, no, mm -mm, oh, I don't know what that was, guys. That was, uh, ooh, an anomaly right there. K kinda. But, but it's fine. It better come in if you're already here. What are you doing, Bjorn? He grabs my shoulder with his huge paw and pulls me into his room, closing the door behind me. A strange smell hits me as soon as I step through the door. Something like watermelon? Oh. There's a hookah standing on the table, two coals burning bright on the top. Huh. C can you please not tell anyone? Oh, sure. Thank you. The air is thick with smoke despite the window being open. Won't this trigger the fire alarm? I wrapped the sensor in aluminum foil. Hmm. I'm not sure if I approve of this, but it's Bjorn's choice and his risk. Do you want some? No, thanks. I never smoked anything. I'm not sure if I'd like to try now. But I don't mind if you do. Don't worry. Thanks. Bjorn sits down with a sigh of relief. So, you needed it? You needed me for something? Well, in a way, yeah. I just needed to take something off my chest. Mm, excuse me. Can I sit down here? Oh, sure. Go ahead. I sit down on the other bed, facing Bjorn. So, uh... You remember when you asked me if... Asked if me and Miko were together and I said no? So you are together? No, quite far from it. Uh, but I get why you thought that. So you know that, well... I am gay, or at least I like males. I look at my paws, rubbing the paw pads against each other, hoping that Bjorn won't notice how embarrassed I am. Did I tell you that me and Miko had a three, year, three years old gap in our friendship? I think either you or him did, yeah. Do you know why, though? Didn't you just lose contact after middle school? We did. I cut him off on purpose. It was an awful thing to do, and I'm mad at, I'm mad at myself for it, but back then it seemed like it, seemed like, you know, like it was reasonable. I had a crush on Miko, and I was sure it would ruin our friendship. Ironic, because I ended up ruining our friendship over it. I couldn't bring myself to talk with him. I felt like I betrayed his trust. It was like a living nightmare, a fever dream I was stuck in. Damn, Carvin, that's rough for both of you. Though, though I'm not surprised to hear that there was something between you. I know friends can be close, but you, how you two acted seemed like something else. You were really affectionate towards him, and seemingly with a complete lack of self-awareness. Did you talk with him about it? No. Uh, not yet. Oh. It, but, do you know, but, 
But you know that you still have the... You, blah. But you know that you still have to, right? Yeah, I plan to do it on this camp. Good. That's the bare minimum you should do. So, you say that was a long... That was long ago, back in middle, back in middle school. What about now? Yeah, what about now? That's sort of what I'm trying to figure out. I don't want to repeat that. I'm afraid that I might start feeling something towards him again. Though, this time I'd admit, I'd admit it instead of acting like a coward. I wasn't quite ready to come out back then, but look at me now. I barge into your room and tell you I'm gay. Yeah, that's quite a progress. Bjorn takes a long puff from the hookah, water bubbling violently inside the glass bulb. A cloud of smoke that escapes from his nose disperses in the air, filling the room with heavy cherry and watermelon aroma. Even though I don't smoke myself, the smoke makes me feel lightheaded. As if it was seeping through my head and clouding my brain. Say, did you ever con did you ever consider that Miko might be into you? No. Why? I didn't think about that. I was preoccupied with panicking about my own feelings and beating myself up over them. At the beginning, I thought about how joyous it would be to end up together, of course, but it always seemed like a distant dream that I was looking at, looking at from behind a glass pane, unable to reach out to it. I think I was scared. I felt like what I did, uh, falling in love with him, was a transgression that I would be punished for. I couldn't act. So I cut myself off. That's really sad. Love should be a joyous thing. But you know, it's quite ironic. Uh, how to put it, it's fairly obvious that Miko is feeling something towards you even now. Huh? Are you for real? Well, I'm saying what I'm thinking for myself, but to me it's fairly obvious. It's plain to see in the way Miko's looking at you. In the way he looks at me. There's something in my chest that wants to get out. A weird, weird feeling. Deeply unpleasant, but also cleansing. If it's true, then I've wasted years of my life running away pointlessly, hurting both me and Miko because I didn't believe in happy endings. That's why I'm asking him. What about now? Do you still have feelings towards him? I don't know myself. Uh, three years change a lot. What's within me is clouded like this room we're sitting in. What do you? What you definitely need to do is tell Miko everything you told me. Everything should go fine after that, I'm sure. I nod. Everything will go fine. Thank you. And Carvin, if I can ask, why me? You could have talked with Lake or just about anyone else. Well, you already saw us together and, you know, Miko, but I haven't seen you talking with him outside the cafeteria. But somehow I felt that you'd be the best person to talk to, because you'd understand me, just a hunch. Something about him made me feel like he's not a kind of person to judge others but to listen to them and try to understand them. I don't know how easy it would be to judge me in this situation. Thank you, again, for listening to me, and your advice. Thank you for trusting me with this. I think I'll go now. I have some things I need to think through. Sure, understandable. I stand up in a little vertigo, a little vertigo hitting me. I'm not sure if that's the smoke or all the emotions that overwhelm me. Good luck! The dim light of the lamp cast steep shadows across the room, like branches of a tree. I traced them with my sight, sprawled across my bed. Miko's feeling, so Miko's feeling something towards me. Could Bjorn be right? What if he's completely wrong about all this? I won't know anything before I talk with Miko, but... So the sooner I do, the better. And not now, there's supper soon. But if I'm staying at his room today, too, I could do it before we go to sleep. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!